Fitmouse fam, what's happening? It's her mix a lot, uh, co-founder and head of culture. That is a new thing. Um, no longer executive director of Femhouse. I'm moving on to bigger, better, more fun things. I'll keep doing doing this with you guys here though. I'm here with Bird. Bird is uh, Charlotte based, right? Yes, Charlotte based. DJ, event promoter, community builder. Um, everybody say hello to Bird, and I'll say hello to Bird. Hey, Bird, how you doing? Hello, I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for being here with us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Um, so my first question of everyone that I speak to is tell me your superhero origin story. Like how did you come to be here with me in this moment right now? Oh, wow. Um, it's been a journey. Let's just, let's just start there. Um, always been a lover of, uh, music. Um, I first started off as an artist. I, I made hip hop. And um, I did that for a few years, and then this thing called the pandemic happened. And so um, forced us to be inside, and I learned how to DJ. Um, before that, I dabbled in it, but I really had the free time and the creative energy to just flow in it. So I um, have been DJing for about five years now. Um, doing this music thing. Um, I've um, explored different avenues of it um, from DJing with artists. Um, you know, I might run a set for, for a hip hop artist, or um, I might do a private event or a sporting event. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a fun journey thus far. Um, and yeah, that's how I'm here today. When you sat down and decided you wanted to learn how to DJ, how did you learn? What like what was your first step? Were you watching YouTube's? Are you hitting up the homies? Like what? Yeah, so um, I was blessed to have. Um, so back before DJing, I was in a retail space, and my manager at the time um, was a DJ, and so I had talked to him a, a little bit about you know wanting to learn, and he happened to have a whole bunch of gear, and he was like, hey. You know, I just happen to have this controller and these speakers, um, you know, you should, you should buy from me and, and learn how to do that. So I did that. Um, he taught me the, the beginning, you know, where things were. Um, but YouTube University was my best friend, um, was definitely on there. Um, just figuring it out and, and honestly, just messing around. Um, yeah, learning from scratch is what I like to say. You learn from you learn to scratch from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so speaking of scratching, I'm 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 going to see uh, Missy Elliott and Timberland tonight. And exciting. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the spirit of your scratch with me. That's yes, like please do, please do. The closest yeah. they're coming to Charlotte is um is actually Atlanta. And I thought about going because I think I think they'll be here to, uh, be there at the end of the month. So that's going to be dope. I think, I think you should go, but I'll let you know how it was. Yeah, please do. Please do. This is one of my faves. <laughs> so um, you're a hip hop artist. And then the pandemic comes. You sort of change lanes. You start learning how to DJ. Um, how did your sort of like hip hop roots, obviously, it feels like sort of a stupid question to ask, but how did your hip hop roots sort of inform your DJing journey, especially as you started to sort of expand genre rise. I know that in your bio, you say, you know, Afro tech house, Afro beats, uh, electronic, like it runs the gamut. So mm -hmm. how, uh, how did one hand wash the other? Um, well, obviously that was my base, my base for the, for the, for the rhythm. Um, I'm a big fan of jazzy hip hop. So that kind of took me into a jazzy lane um, for a bit. Um, and then I really got into um, finding remixes on the internet, getting on SoundCloud and just, just searching my favorite hip hop song and yeah, then and discovering a remix. And I'm like, ooh, what is, what is this? What do, what do, we, what do we call uh, this sound? So that's kind of how um, hip hop took me into an electronic um, space, you know, a lot of, a lot of electronic s songs and sounds, um, you know, take little elements of hip hop yeah. and, and throw them in there. Um, so yeah, that was a really, uh, a really quick, a great question. So I like all styles of music. I listen to a little bit of um, everything, but that was definitely the base. 
because when I first started, I had the idea of like DJing my own set, like performing and then like DJing my own my own site. Yeah, I was I was still from what it's worth, I would still like to see that. <laughs> I uh, I kind of did that a little bit um, when I would go online on like Facebook Live, you know, uh-huh. back when yeah. the people were there, just kind of do my thing. So yeah, yeah. Well, if you were to if you were to resurrect that. Uh programming i would be i would be front and center for that i would definitely. I keep you posted i keep you posted you for sure right, for sure <laughs> um how has i mean you know one of the things i hear you'd be I, maybe you wouldn't be shocked actually since you wanted them but you know since the pandemic and since i started doing this segment of the radio show i would say that a cool 60 to 70 percent of the people that i talk to have just learned to dj over the pandemic um wow and most of them name either, you know, some sort of like great loss that they endured during the pandemic mm-hmm. or sort of like this hunger for community that they were missing during the pandemic as like mm-hmm. the catalyst to their DJ career. Where do you land on that? What was, do you have a great catalyst? Was your, how was your community showing up for you um, as you went on this journey? And how are they continuing to show up for you now that you're on it? So I say I built a lot of my community online and then it transferred into real life. Um, So um, I took to DJing because I couldn't perform live in person. So I would get on Facebook or I would get on Instagram as much as it would allow me because at a certain point it would cut out, you know. You get cut off, yeah. (laughs) I would would cut cut on to the the songs and things. Um, And so I... um, did this thing that I called exchange and I would literally get on at 10 o'clock every night and do my thing. And so every started, night. Yeah. Yeah. People started showing up consistently and, um, wow. and that's how I built it. And so people, um, some of the people, um, that were virtually with me saw me online and thought that I, you know, did this, um, in real life. Um, and so once the world opened up, it just, open me up to different kinds of events and that's how the journey really started and now we're here and you have your own event called all my friends are fly yes yes now we're here now we're here five years uh in the making (laughs) that's incredible tell me tell me everything about all my friends are fly um so all my friends are fly is a event and a community um obviously based in music um and um Right now, I'm working in collaboration with a print shop called MacFly Fresh. And so the event happens every other week and we come together um, on the basis of art, music, and fashion. So MacFly is a print shop and they do custom prints and custom garments. And I am a big lover of fashion, so I um, curate every week a fresh um, design that people can put on their shirts. So we come in, yeah, we come in um, and um, guests can come in and say, okay, I want that all my friends of fly design. And then I want um, MacFly's design. MacFly, they um, specialize in um, icons. So like last week we had, um, we let, we let guests decide um, ahead of time vote. Um, We had Bernie Mac as one of the icons. we had Tupac as one of the icons that was voted on, um, Erica Badu, um, and a few other musicians um, that folks can come in and get all my friends to fly with the big, you know, Bernie Mac on the top and, you know, just, just have fun and be creative all while I'm mixing and there's a live um, party happening. So um, it's been fun to explore. It's um, definitely a very engaging space because we have the dance floor um, with the live music happening. We have the, the um, print um, activation happening where folks can actually screen print their own things. And they're also welcome to bring, you know, if you have a, we have some folks bring like a denim jacket or, you know, a, a bag, a canvas bag that you want the designs on. Um, they could come in and bring that in. And then we also have games for people to, you know, engage in. So it's a complete vibe. Um, I um, designed it to feel like a living room. So when you walk in, there's a couch, 
There's, you know, some floor pillows. You can just come in and explore the way you want to explore. Um, so it's been fun. That sounds incredible. That puts me in the mind. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rewatching the show Pose again. Okay. Okay. And I'm thinking about, um, how ballroom was such an immersive experience, right? Like it wasn't just about the dance floor, but it was about the creativity. It was about the fashion. Um, it was about the risk taking. Um, and I'm, I'm hearing a lot of parallels and all my friends are fly. I can't, I gotta, I gotta get my ass to Charlotte. I know, I would love for you to experience it. <laughs> Take back some custom garments. What's the feedback you're getting from the community in creating this space? Um, I'm hearing that it feels like home. I'm, I'm hearing that it feels comfortable. Um, what I'm finding is that the folks that attend stay. They actually, you know, um, experience the things and they, they bounce around. Um, I um, have a blank canvas when you enter and I usually ask a thought-provoking question. Um, and we have some art utensils so people can, you know, draw how they feel. So like last week I asked the question, um, what color is your personality? So people, you know, draw what color their personality is. All right, what color their personality is. So there's that. And then there's mixing and mingling. Um, so I've gotten really great feedback so far. Um, people are enjoying the music, which I'm having fun with because if, because I, I'm creating it to feel like a living room, I want to play like what I want to play. And sure. it's cool that people are receptive to me playing what I want to play because, you know, certain spaces you go in, um, there's a certain, um, you know, expectation for the music. Um, so it's cool to just have fun with it and, and do what I want to do, essentially. That's amazing. Speaking of music and playing what you want to play, what should the folks expect from the mix? So I'm really into my piano. They can expect to hear some Amapiano for sure. Um, they can expect to hear some house. Um, they can expect to hear things that are familiar, but maybe in a different, a different way. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. What's coming up next for, for you, for all the folks that have fallen in love with you over the course of this radio show? Uh, um, tell them where to find you, how to find you, where you'll be at, what you'll be up to. So you can find me on all social platforms at CBurtGo if you want to follow my personal page. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on, you know, Facebook. And um, I'm on, I, I do have a YouTube, but I'm here there with my personal YouTube. Um, I'm on Mixcloud if you want to hear mixes. Um I'd also suggest following All My Friends Are Fly. Um, we are going to continue the series, continue to grow it, continue to um, collaborate with dope people, fly people that do fly stuff. That's like what I'm all about. Um, a cool thing I also forgot to mention is that with All My Friends Are Fly, we are doing um, live recordings. So oh, wow. um, the events are episodic. So you'll be able to go on YouTube and you know, watch a 30 minute segment of the mix and, you know, people are mixing and mingling. Um, I am going to launch that on August 1st on YouTube. It'll be brand new. Um, it'll be all my friends are fly, um, on YouTube. Um, so yeah, eventually I'm going to feature other DJs and musicians and, um, just continue to grow this, grow this thing out. That's incredible. Yeah. I have a question that I ask of everybody interesting that I speak to and I'm going to ask it of you right now. What do you say to young bird? You're sitting down across from a, a younger version of yourself. It's just the two of you, you're in a quiet room. What do you say to that young lady to make sure that she gets here? Wow. That's an awesome question. Ooh. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming and keep going. Um, I, looking back at Young Bird, I never would have imagined that I would be here um, in this way. Um, I've always been a dreamer, though, um, and the things that we dream, we create and we manifest. And um, 
the bird today is an example of that. Um, you know, wow, that's a, that's a really beautiful question. <laughs> but yeah, keep dreaming. Um, that 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 builds the future. Your dreams build the future. Wise words from a wise bird. <laughs> the bird is a word, they say. Fam <laughs> House fam, this is bird. Go see bird, go. I'm going to keep watching and cheering. Go bird, go. Thank I'm your mix a lot. This has been Fem House Radio. Pass the mic edition. Yeah, peace. <laughs>